Now in here, we want to organize things a little bit better so that our framework, because we are creating a framework here, our framework can run as we need, okay? So from here, once you are done with this framework, you can use it for all your other projects because you can just copy this whole folder, paste it, um, this whole folder here, paste it somewhere else and create a new project so you don't have to start from scratch. So let's organize things a little bit better because we have a function here and we have a class here, which is not good. These things should be separate, okay? So what we will do is we'll create a file, a a file that contains all the functions. So first of all, let's go to the core folder here, and then I'm going to right click and create a new file. Now, like I said, it's always a good idea to, um, let's say silence is golden. It's always a good idea to create a an index.php file everywhere like that. So inside the core folder, let's save an index.php for security reasons. Okay, great. Silence is golden. That's good. Same thing in the controller file. Uh, let me copy what I've written here. And let's controller folder, new folder, new, new file, paste, and let's call it index.php. There we go. Okay, very good, some security. Same thing in the app, new, paste, boom. So we'll put everywhere we can, for now this is fine. Very good. Now what we want to do is move all the functions to a <clears throat> one place. So I've cut that and inside the core, I'll right click new file, put some PHP tags and paste that. Save this as functions.php so this is in the core folder okay so that's one of the core files that will always be there just this function should always be there to take care of you the only problem now is we've moved it from the index page so which means now that we are calling it if we call it somewhere we'll get an error so let me try and call it over here and say show array Okay, at that point, so that we can get an error. So, call to an undefined function, sure. Okay, so let's make sure it exists. So what we will do is we'll include it here in the top of the index page. So I'm just going to say require. And I want to require that file. So I'll do back back app slash core slash function functions.php. So now that I've required it there, uh, the file is included in this. And so we shouldn't get an error. See that? That's good. So I can remove that. But you see, we're going to be including a lot of files. I don't want us to come back and just or put so many require, require, require in our index page. No, no, no. What I want to do instead, in the core, I will put a file to initialize things. I'll call it init.php. So in the core, I'll right click, new file, put a PHP file there. And then in here is where I'm going to include my files. So I'm going to call this init.php, good. So the initializer here, so what we're doing in the index page, we are loading the initializer. So that's the init, uh, this is the init file. So in here, that's where I'm going to load functions.php. Now I'm still referring to this from the index page. So let's see if that works actually. I'll refresh. So it's working. So as you can see, we're loading from, not from the init page, we are assuming we are in the index page because we are including the init in the index page. And so that's where we are moving from, from the index to the app, to the core, to the functions. Even though core, this init and functions are in the same page, uh, which means it should work like this, right? And it does work, which is incredible. Okay, so let's leave it there. If it works, that's fine. Now, uh, let me require a few more files. So what I would do is, I don't want this app to be in here. This is a very valuable file. So I'm going to remove that. 
and then I'm going to remove the whole class. So I'll cut the class and then go to the core function, core thingy here and put some PHP tags, save this as app.php. You can use a capital A, but just be wary of these capital letters, right? If you use a capital letter for the file name, you should include it as such because Linux systems, uh, which most servers are based on, are case sensitive when it comes to file names. So just be careful about that. So here we're including the init. So in the init, we should include the app file. So the app file should come after the functions so that the app class should can make use of the functions. So let's see if this works fine. Okay, very good. Things are working. We are on the home page. So let me remove all of this. Okay, so too few arguments on home index. Okay, that's good. That's because on the home, we are not expecting any IDs or anything like that. So let's remove that. Let's remove this as well. Same thing on the delete. Let's remove those things. We are not expecting any arguments there. So let's refresh. Okay, so we still have our home page. Everything still runs fine. And so let's continue. So now I have up, which means the index page only has these files. Now we will be using sessions to store the user session. So let's do session start from here. Okay. This means throughout the um, the application, no need to do session start again because we've started it here on the main page. Every page that loads, loads through the index page, so the session will always be active. So that's a plus there. So this is the only thing we'll have in the index page and we are done with the index page. So index page, we just have these things and that's it. So let's close it. We'll never use it again. Okay, so from here we have functions. Any function you want to add, just add it here and it will work. And now keep in mind that the init file should include all the files in the core folder. So if you add a file in the core folder and you need it, just put it here, okay? For example, we will need a config file for configuration. So the config should come first, config.php. So let's add that to the core. I will put some uh, PHP style thing is here and say config.php this is where we'll put our configuration like what the app name is etc etc so what else here um models we won't have any we have these guys here which is fine and then we can deal with views now so i think that's it really but we need a database file as well here so we're going to add a database file uh, but otherwise we have a working framework now okay and also in the assets here uh, the assets folder let's create a few new folders here let's do css and then let's do new folder let's do javascript and let's do images oops not a new file but a new folder and in case you have fonts you can put them there Okay, so that's where our CSS will run in the public folder. So we put things in the public folder, these things, the CSS, the JavaScript, we put them here because they need to be accessible publicly. If you put these guys in the app folder here, which will be above the public folder, they won't load on your website. That's the thing. So you can't put these guys here where it's restricted. Otherwise, they will not load when you load your website. That's why we are putting them here. All right, very good. So, so far, so good. We have a running um, uh, application here. Let me just put the database file here. I'm just going to say new file, just for just. Let me put here, let's say class. Let me save this though, database, database.php. It's usually hard to type. Yes, database class. Okay, so this one is going to be called class database, of course. No extensions required. And let's remove everything else. And then let's go to the init 
and add it. So after the configuration, then we can add our database, but we may need to use functions from the functions page. So let's add the database after that, like so. Okay, cool. If I go back and refresh, now we have everything working as intended. All right, so now we have a working framework here to do things from. So I will see you in the next video. Let's do the database connection so that the um, our framework is complete so we can reuse it over and over again in other projects.